What's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video. Welcome to another episode about Laravel. In this tutorial, we're gonna start looking into the authentication options of Laravel, which they come out of the box by default inside a new Laravel installation. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable, and affordable VPS in the cloud, SkySilk.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. So first of all, if we access our app HTTP controllers, here we should find an auth folder that comes by default when you install Laravel for the first time. Here basically you can find the full boilerplate of all the files, controllers, methods and everything that you could need in order to have a proper authentication workflow in your site. So registering a user, logging a user, verifying a user, uh, request a forgot password and so on. By default all these controllers are not hooked to any session of our current installation. In order to do that, we need to use a, a specific artisan command. Before doing it though, just a quick heads up that all the authentication configuration, all the options that you can find, you can edit in Laravel are inside the config auth.php file. This file can be kind of confusing and kind of frightening because there are a lot of information and a lot of contents and there are a bunch of attributes and array where you can define some variables and define how Laravel handles the authentication and the storing of the data and you can easily control all the options. I strongly suggest you to read the Laravel documentation which you can find the link in the description below because this file it's really important to know because it gives you the power to fully control how Laravel authenticate and handles the user. But let's start. Let's open our terminal and uh, let's run the command php artisan make column auth. And be careful because this command will install a bunch of things that could potentially destroy your uh, file structure. Like it's gonna install a lot of views and new folders inside your resource folder. It's gonna install and write new routes, the authentication routes in your web routes. So, Finger crossed that nothing is broken, but always use a version control system or back up your files because a lot of changes will happen here. Let's hit enter and the authentication scaffolding was generated successfully. So if we access back our code editor, now we're gonna see a bunch of extra things. So first in the web route, the first thing that you will see auth routes. Automatically Laravel will handle all the routes to registering, login, sign up, forgot password, all those URLs that the user will use throughout the authentication process automatically are all stored in these built-in routes. We can of course edit those but it's not really necessary because the, the, the Laravel default are pretty good. And also Laravel creates a default route called home and creates a new home controller with an index method that redirects to home that of course you can see now it conflicts with our. So let's comment these out just for now and let's save it. Now the other thing that happened here, first let's access the resource. In the resources views folder, you see we have a lot of extra things. We have the home.play.php, uh, two new folders, one called auth and one called layouts. First the home controller is just a simple file that automatically Laravel generate in order to handle a, a sort of like dashboard for the user. And if we wanna actually give it a try, let's uncomment the home route, let's comment our front end controller let's comment the page controller. Let's go to forward slash home. Here we're gonna see this really super ugly structure that has the, the title of our website, a couple of links that go to the register form and the login form, and then we have the forgot password form. So all these different things, and you can see the URL changes dynamically with all permalinks. All these things were automatically generated by Laravel, and also with this new route and with this new resource, Laravel automatically handles error messages, responses, and all this kind of stuff. It looks super ugly because I stripped out at the beginning of this tutorial series the bootstrap CSS by default and any other CSS that I didn't want to have it. But if you install a new version of Laravel and you set up the auth immediately, this page will look really good because it comes with 
bootstrap by default but of course if we give it a try and uh, we try to log in with something completely absurd that we don't have automatic also laravel handles the error messages for us and then we can register a new user and all this kind of good stuff all the routes that we just saw are coming directly from the auth folder inside the views and you can start seeing how laravel helps you to keep your file structure properly organized because it doesn't really matter your file structure you can literally do whatever you want but it's good to organize files in folders that reflect what those files handle if you continue to analyze what laravel installed in the app HTTP controllers, we're gonna have a home controller that the main thing that does, it returns the view home whenever we tap the index and it's pretty much identical to what we did here previously. But the particular thing about the home controller here is that in the construct of this specific controller, it's calling a middleware called auth. The middleware auth is basically telling to Laravel, don't allow any user to access this controller or whatever method we're returning to this controller. So in this case, the home page, if the user is not authenticated. And we're gonna see how to implement this in our own controller in the next videos. So before concluding this tutorial, a quick update on the web routes and how you can properly structure the web route. So here you can see we have a sort of a problem because if we uncomment the page, we have this route that basically get whatever URL we're grabbing and is going to try to fetch that page from the database and return it as a view. So if we actually try to access the forward slash login here, we refresh the page, we're going to have a 404 because the forward slash login doesn't exist. And also if we try once again to go to the home page, we're going to have a 404 once again because this route that we have here is preventing these other two to be actually activated. But this is not an issue. This is the way Laravel works in terms of routes. It gives priority to the routes that are above, so in a cascading order. So if we want to give priority to the actual auth routes, we should put them above everything else. So if we go back to our front end here and we actually this time write login, the login will work. But of course, if we write about, the about page works as well. And we can do exactly the same here. So if we actually go home page here is going to the 404 because we don't have that in the database, but the actual home shouldn't get cached by the front end controller, but it should happen before. So we can keep all the authentication related routes before the actual page slug routes. And if we try it again, we refresh the home page, we get redirected to the login, a register, login, forgot password, all these routes work, but also our regular contact, about route, and so on. But that's pretty much it for this video. In the next one, we're gonna actually see how the authentication works and how it stores the data in our database and how to actually edit the auth controller in order to do what we wanna do and not leave the default options of Laravel. That's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give it a like or subscribe. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.